Welcome to our 2021 Awana Awards Night. We're all excited to be here. I hope you are. I just want to take a minute to welcome you all and thank you all for coming out. Um, we had a great Awana year this year. Um, I, it was very, uh, very close and personal, not in the physical sense, but we had fewer kids, and so we had the leaders had a good ratio as far as spending time and working with each kid individually. It was a really awesome year. Um, before we get started, I just want to go over a couple of the expectations for tonight, because I know COVID's going on, so all your awards that you're going to earn tonight are at your tables. So at no time tonight will the clubbers be coming up and back and forth to the stage. All their performances have been pre-recorded, and they will play on the big screen. Um, all right, what else? Okay. Um, if you're an adult, once you're seated, you can take your mask off. If you prefer to wear your mask, that's fine as well. Um, so before I get started, um, I just want to put some thank yous out there. Um, a big thank you to our social committee. Uh, they went and picked up all the uh, food and the waters, and we helped set up tables, and they did a lot of work for this. So we just want to say thank you to them. Uh, thank you to our church family that's always here and praying for our WANA program every week. It's, we couldn't do it without that, so thank you, thank you. And thank you to my leaders. The leaders are what keeps this program going, and I wish I could do more, but I have a drawing with some prizes. I know you guys don't do it for the prizes, and you don't do it for recognition up here. It's probably the last thing you want, but we're going to do a drawing. I have some gift cards. We have five gift cards, so we're going to draw five names. I have all the uh, Awana leaders in a bowl here. Lincoln, come here. 
pick a name out of there. Which one? Who is it? <laughs> Kelly Swimley. <laughs> take that there. Autumn. Grab another name. We got five of them. Mr. Louis Boyce, the man, Autumn. He's always here behind the scenes doing PowerPoint and computer and greeting at the doors, and we really appreciate that. Ava, trying to pick kids that are close that I know the names of. Mary Becker. Mary helps with the second grade group, and she does a lot of crafty, cool stuff with them, and she's just a really great to have. Eli, you want to draw a name, bud? Don't pick your mom's name. <laughs> Who is it? Mrs. Janet Lanning. She helps in our cubby group. We got one more. I'm just going to grab our secretary. She's back there, bud. All right, so you see on your table, you have water bottles, you got snacks, you got cookies. Those are yours. Feel free to snack on them anytime you want. There's no set time to eat. There's no set time in anything. If you don't eat it and you want to take it all home, take it home with you, including the container. Um, I'm going to open our time in a word of prayer, and then we'll get on with the program. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for tonight. We thank you um, for the Oana program that we run here. It's so valuable for these kids. We just thank you and praise you for the the privilege of working with these kids every week, Lord. We thank you for this. Um, let's just be with our time tonight. Help us to not only celebrate the clubber's hard work, but celebrate the fact that these kids are, are in your word and they're learning your word, and we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we had the last few weeks of Awana, uh, we had a little competition between the boys and the girls. We collected offering, and... So, I think they're on the slide. The, girl, the boys collected $93.69. And the girls collected $103.45. The girls collected $103.45. So, that's about $200 worth of change. So that being said, um, I'm going to introduce our WANA missionary, Bob Bennett. He came to join us for the night, and we're excited to have him. We haven't seen him in like three years because of COVID. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if it's been three years, but uh, it's been a while. Uh, how many of you know this has been a crazy year, right? Uh, it's also been an amazing year. Uh, God's done a lot of neat things, and I wanted to just kind of give you a little missionary update. And uh, I also have something to give away. Uh, actually, I, I brought this for somebody else, but I forgot I'd already given him one. So um, uh, I guess I'd like to get an idea of who, who's been serving in Awana the longest here in your Awana club. Uh, do we have anybody that's put in more than... 15 years? Yeah, 20 years? I see some heads shaking. Actually, I can't give this to Kelly either because I've already given her one. Uh, anybody more than 20 years? Let me see a hand. Anybody more than 20 years? Okay. 25 years. Do I hear any more than 25? All right, John, could I have you deliver that? Okay, there you go. Uh, the book that I'm giving out is called Resilient, 
and uh, it's a book about uh, child discipleship, and it was written by some folks from Awana about a year, a little over a year ago. We introduced it, they, they introduced it in January of 2020, January of 2020, and then COVID hit like in March and shut everything down, right? So we, we just nicely got the book out there and got started talking about this idea of child discipleship here in America and, and what we see as important about that and, and how maybe we need to change the conversation. Because everywhere I go, people talk to me about children's ministry, which is such a broad uh, topic. It can mean anything to anybody uh, when you talk children's ministry. Anything from nursery uh, supplies and uh, you know furniture for the nursery to a curriculum that grounds kids in scripture. Any, any of that can all fall under children's ministry. So in Awana, we're trying to kind of change the subject a little bit and, and just talk about children's uh, discipleship. What are we doing to disciple kids here in America? And the truth is to, that to be told is that we need to disciple kids in a different way than we ever have before. Our culture is changing. Things are happening here in our country that many of us never thought would happen. And so we need to, we need to really hone in on child discipleship. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes, but I wanted to kind of give you uh, just an update on what we've been doing. Uh, most of you know the key verse for Awana, 2 Timothy 2, uh, 15. Uh, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman uh, who has, no, yeah, I learned it in King James. Sorry, I got to back up here. Uh, a workman who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. And so, you know, that's still our key verse. That's still what we want to accomplish with kids. We want to teach them to be approved workmen. And uh, so, you know, Dorinda and I have served in Awana since 1998. Uh, actually, we started April 1st, 1998. So uh, we picked that date because it was no joke, right? This was a serious thing. We're going to do this. And uh, God has blessed in our ministry uh, over the years. Um, in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, I grew up in western Pennsylvania, almost to Ohio, and uh, they have uh, or had a long-term Awana missionary, Marlon Fuller. Uh, some of you may have met the Fullers over the years, and we kind of grew up under them, got involved in Awana, but, you know, Marlon was already there as their missionary, so we had to go find someplace else to be a missionary. So God, in 1998, we moved to the eastern part of the state, and we bought a house in Great Bend, and we started uh, covering Central New York and Northeastern PA. And uh, the thing is, uh, you know, when I grew up in, there in Western Pennsylvania, my family had no connection with Jesus Christ, right? They weren't teaching me. They weren't discipling me at all. Now, the world was discipling me, right? And the school was discipling me. I mean, I was learning things uh, from a worldly perspective, but I wasn't learning anything about Jesus Christ, and I wasn't learning it from my family either. But, you know, hope is found in Jesus Christ. And so I put this little picture uh, up of a, a little country church. That looks very much like the church I first started attending. It is not a picture of that church. I couldn't find one of that church, but it looked very much like that. A little wood frame building kind of out in the middle of nowhere in a rural part of Pennsylvania. And I started going to church because of a bus ministry. And again, this is not the bus that picked me up, but on this bus, if you, if you look at the front of it, it says LBC, and uh, our church was called Lyona Bible Church. And so I just happened to find this picture online. It is not one of our bus churches, or our church buses, but again, it works. So um, you guys need to understand that if it hadn't been for people who wanted to disciple children, people who wanted to reach people with the, kids with the gospel, I wouldn't be here today. And so they did a lot of work to, to, to reach out to me so I could hear the gospel. Well, what about our area? I started telling you about how God moved us into ministry. Well, it's changed a lot lately because the Fullers have retired and so has a missionary that had the far eastern part of Pennsylvania. And so now Dorinda and I basically have all of northern Pennsylvania, north of Interstate 80. Uh, we go really from the tip of Long Island all the way to the Ohio border 
except we skip over a little part of New Jersey there, right? So, uh, so we have quite a few miles to cover in our, uh, in our ministry with Awana. And in that area, I don't know if I have a slide on that. Yeah, in that area, there are about 140 active Awana churches and about 8,000 kids. Now, these are pre-COVID numbers. I have to throw that out there because this has been such a crazy year. Um, nobody wants to talk about their numbers this year, right? So, well, I shouldn't say that. I actually had two churches that have told me this is the best year they've ever had as far as attendance, but that was because they were the only show in town, right? They were the only thing that was open. Uh, everything else was shut down. And so kids were clamoring for something to be a part of. Parents wanted to get rid of their kids for a couple hours. I don't know, but they had the best attendance this year as, as ever. But, uh, but that was very unusual. Most churches were telling me that their numbers were way down this year. But in those same counties that I serve as the Iwana missionary, there are over three million kids growing up. So the question is, how are those three million kids being discipled? We might have 8,000, a little over 8,000 kids in our Iwana clubs might have, and we hope that they are being discipled well, but what about those other kids that make up that three million kids? And then all of a sudden COVID hit, right? So we were on a good path. Like we had new clubs starting, we were, things were going great, and then all of a sudden COVID hit. And uh, with, uh, you know, with the onslaught of COVID, we had to learn how to serve in a little different way. I used to spend two or three days a week out on the road visiting pastors and Awana ministry directors and visiting Awana clubs and stopping in to encourage uh, people about children's ministry and all of a sudden that had to stop I couldn't go from church to church and from place to place I couldn't be out on the road like I was and every church out there was going what do we do now how do we handle this and so um, we we came up with this idea that doing something is always better than doing nothing right I, I mean I think that's pretty common sense doing something's always better than doing nothing and yet about 40% of our churches just kind of threw their hands in the air and said, there's no way we can have kids in the building. We can't do this. And so they didn't even start their Awana clubs this year. They didn't do anything with Awana. About 40% of our churches. So that left about 60% of our churches that did something. And many of those, probably about half of those, switched over to do an online version of Awana to try to do something through Zoom uh, how many of you have learned how to Zoom during this uh, pandemic? Yeah, a lot. I see all the kids' hands in the air. It's probably through your school you had to do that. Well, we have several, a number of Awana clubs that turned their whole club over to Zoom. And so every Wednesday night, all their kids would log in and the, the leaders would log in and they'd break them off all into little uh, breakout rooms and you, they would still try to do Awana, but they're doing it all through Zoom. And I have to commend those churches because to me, that would be a very difficult thing. Uh, but yet we had several churches that have done that. And the neat thing is some of them picked up uh, numbers of kids who were too far away to drive to come to their club live. But when they could log in, now my grandkids could be a part of the club. My, my cousins out in Colorado could be a part of our club. Uh, people in other countries. We have one of our churches in Long Island. It's an Indian church. They're uh, folks of Indian descent. And uh, their Indian families are very tight. And uh, many of them, when they switched over to Zoom, many of them said, hey, could we connect with our families back in India? Like, would this work? Could we do this? Sure, we could do that. What about family members that live in other parts of the U.S.? Sure. And they, they said that they added about 60 kids to their numbers because they could do ministry online. But they're calling me going, how do, you, how do we do this? I don't know. I've never lived through a pandemic before. I don't know how to do this, but I'll figure it out for you. So we, uh, we had to very quickly uh, start having things like webinars and Zoom meetings. And I spent a lot of time on, on the phone and doing emails about, here's how you log into Zoom. Like, here's how you do this, right? And, and try to get this all together. And uh, man, what, a, what an amazing change has happened in our ministry because of that. So one thing I want to be sure of is that we don't waste this pandemic, right? Never waste a good pandemic. There are things that we can learn and we can recognize that we learned 
because of the pandemic, right? So um, s one thing I learned is that many of our churches are very program-minded. And what that means is, as long as they can have kids running around a circle and wearing uniforms and coming into the church building, they, that's a wanna. That's what they see as a wanna. And, and when that can't happen, all of a sudden they say, well, we can't do anything. But I want those churches to be mission-minded, where they're looking at the kids going, we want to we wanna focus on discipleship. You know, the, the Iwana Game Circle is a fantastic tool, but it's a tool, right? It's, a, it's, it's just a tool. The, the uniforms and the awards and all those badges and even the handbooks, those are all tools that we use. Iwana has developed them over the years, and we've tried to refine them and get them to be something kids really like. Even the awards that are sitting on your tables tonight, those are tools that we use to motivate kids to do the work they need to do in Iwana. But those are just tools. They're part of the program. They're not really the mission of Awana, which is to reach boys and girls with the gospel of Christ and train them to serve him, right? So, um, so mo many of our churches are, mission, are uh, program-minded, not mission-minded. And then um, relationship is what matters most. We learned that because of this pandemic. The churches where we had good relationships, where Awana leaders had good relationships with the kids and the families. Those are the churches that continued on and, and did ministry and were able to continue to function. Just like your church um, has uh, Awana leaders who are dedicated to building relationship with the kids and encouraging them and, and building into their lives. And so, uh, so relationship matters. And then another thing I learned, and I've got to, I've got to carry this on, you know, as the pandemic kind of wears down, and that is that we can do things that we've never done before, right? Before the pandemic hit, I kept hearing from people, oh, we, we've never done that before. Well, I don't think we could do that. I don't, I don't, think, we could, I don't think we could do a WANA because our church has never had a WANA. Um, I don't think we could, you know, uh, have an Awana game day because we've never done that before. I don't think our kids could go to Bible quiz because we've never done that before. But see, now we've all had to learn to do things like wear masks, right? We never wore masks before, but now we do uh, from time to time. We, 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 if you're like me, I try not to because it fogs my glasses up, but I still wear a mask when I need to, right? And we've learned to do things that we've never done before. And so we can learn those things. And then the next thing is uh, sometimes meetings stop, but the mission continues. You know, the scriptures are very clear. They tell us that we're supposed to be taking the word of God and we're supposed to be sharing it with others. We're supposed to be training them and teaching them and helping them to grow in their faith. We're supposed to be sharing the gospel with them. That mission doesn't stop just because there's a pandemic going on, right? That's a mandate from scripture to continue to do those things. Now, it might mean that we do them in a different way, but we still continue the mission. The meetings might stop, but the mission continues. And then um, sometimes our methods do need to change. Uh, oftentimes, and I have to tell you this, I, I run into a lot of churches that have had Awana for a long time, and they're still doing things exactly like they did 30 years ago, right? And, and they, they're like, why is Awana constantly changing this stuff? I can't believe we have to change. Well, you know what? Sometimes our methods need to change because we need to adapt to the culture around us. We need to adapt and we need to be seen as culturally relevant. Otherwise, kids are in, and parents aren't ever going to want to know or hear what we have to say. And so um, we don't want to waste a good pandemic. Um, there are still three million kids living in our part of New York and Pennsylvania. That's just in, in the counties that we serve. There are still those three million kids. So I want to ask you to pray for Dorinda and I as we do all we can to reach out to those, uh, those kids, all of them. Now, I don't have any idea how God's going to take Awana, the Awana we have now, where we're reaching 4,000 kids to, or no, 8,000 kids, 8,400 kids, to where we're going to reach millions of kids. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to happen. But I can tell you that we're, we're taking every step we can figure out to take to get us there. And as God leads, we're doing more and more. And I want to end with this. I want to leave a, a prayer request with you. 
Um, and that is that coming up here in a, just, I think, about 10 days, uh, May 20th, uh, Dorinda and I are doing something we've never done in ministry before. Uh, when the pandemic hit and all of a sudden I'm stuck at home and we're, we're going, oh, man, what do I do? How do I help more churches get started? How do we do this? I started looking at every church that has had a WANA at one time or another in New York and Pennsylvania. I came up with a list of over a thousand churches that used to have a WANA. Now that's in, in all of both states, not just in my area, but that's in all of both states. But that's a list of over a thousand churches that agree with us doctrinally, and they have used a WANA at one time or another, and I'm wondering, why did they stop? What, what could be done? What, has God changed anything in their, uh, in their way of thinking? And so we started this project where we started going down through that list and checking to see if the church was even still in existence because some of those churches had closed their doors and they no longer exist. We, we stopped to check and see, are they still the same denomination? Are they still uh, in, our, uh, in our group? Would they still agree with us? And do we have a current address for them? And uh, we started working down through that list. And so it's taken us months to work through the list and get it ready. But we finally got everything ready. And about two weeks ago or so, um, we sent a postcard in the mail to over, I think it was over 1,000 churches. And uh, we, want, we wanted to invite those churches to join us for a Zoom meeting that we're having on um, May 20th. So what I'm going to ask you to do is please pray for us. If you can think of it, put it on your calendar, stop and pray for us on May 20th. Uh, we're, we're doing it in the evening. We're going to do it at, from 8 to 9 p.m. That's a Thursday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. And the reason we're doing it so late in the evening is because we're doing it with some other Rwanda missionaries who live on the West Coast. And so in order to find a time that would work for both of us, that's where it ended up. But all together, we've been, uh, the team of missionaries I'm working with, we're, we've invited uh, somewhere around 3,000 churches onto this Zoom meeting. Now, we're not going to get all of them, and if we ever did, that would be the biggest Zoom meeting I've ever been a part of, but, uh, but we're hoping to get 1% of those churches, to log, somebody from that church to log on and talk to us about why did you drop a WANA, what does children's ministry look like, what does child discipleship look like in your church, and what can we do to help. And so pray for us, because we want to reach more kids. We want to get... Uh, churches revived and excited about doing children's ministry again and so that's what we're trying to accomplish uh, I praise the Lord for your church and the work that you guys do uh, every year that we get a chance to come here and visit your club or be part of your closing it's just amazing to me how God is working through your church to touch the lives of so many kids uh, just think about all the kids that you that have come through your Awana club over the years what an amazing um, heritage of child discipleship you have at your church and uh, praise the lord for that i can use that as an example and and point other churches toward that and say look i know that it works in many churches why can't we get it to work in your church what can we do to make it work so uh, please pray for us and uh, i i just want to thank you and encourage you to continue to serve and and build into the lives of the kids here in Trumansburg, and uh, we appreciate all that you guys are doing. All right, we're about to get into awards, but before Kelly comes to talk about Cubbies, I wanted to remind all the parents, if any of your children are missing jewels or patches from your uniform, Come see Amy after tonight, and she, we can get those patches and jewels to you. Kelly? All right, Romans. Go ahead. Five, eight. Yes, while. We were so sinners. Christ died for us. Jail. You made a jail? Yeah. Who's, who's in the jail? Yeah. Oh, there you go. 
Paul. Who's in there? Paul. Jay Paul. And, and Silas. And Silas. Yeah. And what happened? How'd that door open up? They there, got. There was a big, big, big. Call. Earthquake. Earthquake. Okay, Cecilia, does Daddy have one of those jewel belts at home? I uh, know. No? Do you know anybody that does? I know two more. Tim Taylor do. Tim Taylor? Who's Tim Taylor? Tim Taylor on a movie. You uh, watch it, maybe. You watch him? Yeah, I watch it. He has a tool belt? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Cecilia. What do you like about cubbies? What do you love about cubbies? Songs. The songs? Yeah. What else? And I like claps. Oh, yeah. Claps are good. Oh, wait. I'm interviewing her. I'll get to you. Okay, Cecilia, what else? The songs and the claps. Snacks. Snacks. What about the Bible story? Yeah, they're good too. Yeah. Well, I just want to show this to mommy. So, Malachi, what do you like about cubbies? Mm. What do you love about cubbies? I like cubbies and I like cubby bears. You like cubby bears? I like cubby too. Mm. And I like cubby cows. Who's your favorite? Mm, Cecilia and, and. Who's your favorite puppet? The cubby bear is over there. There's two of them. Uh huh. And they're so and they're looking funny. You see the cubby bears? Can you tell me a verse? Do you know a verse? Mm mm. Oh, it might be two treats if you could think of one. How beautiful. You don't remember that one? Okay, so we couldn't, yeah, can you hear me? Not you, Tom. I could not play what we've done all year, but that gives you a little snippet. Um, there was one I wanted to put in that has them singing up here and backwards and hanging off the steps and all that. But first things first, I wanted to announce our graduating cubbies. And there's only one here tonight. So Victoria is going to come up to Sparks. And Della, can you just stand up and like wave real big in the back corner? Della, this is the end of Aunt Kelly's Wickham girls. Della, what'd she say? That is sad, but it's good because I'm expecting to see you, right? In Sparks. I do still have Johnny because Della was a missionary and she said to her cousin, you all need to come to Awana, didn't you? So we got, we got Johnny. Great. I want to mention who has finished their books. Now, 
three and four year olds cannot read. So it obviously takes a lot of help from the parents. You saw Johnny working on it in his car seat, right? So when I mention your name, you might have to have mommy and daddy hold you up, okay? Because it's kind of a team thing. Malachi Hamilton. Can you stand up, Malachi? <laughs> Malachi started technically in August because he could not wait, could not wait. And he was going to be remote. And I don't remember, three, four weeks, I think we tried that remote. He set them on Sundays, and then he came. And then he's just been able to come every week. So Malachi not only finished a book, he reviewed the book. He's just, the clip of him not being able to say a verse is kind of funny because he, he, he quotes verses all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when we mentioned how long we've been in Awana, Aunt Kelly feels pretty old because Laura was in Awana in Cubbies, and I had Laura, and then Ava and Eli come, and now I've got Malachi, and Becca, mommy, was in Cubbies, and it's like, whoa, I've been in here a long time when you start doing the, the children. Um, I want to mention Cecilia Mosier. She's on a vacation right now. But she's also finished her book and done the review. And Della Wickham has finished her book and reviewed. Very good. Um, Johnny has jumped in, I don't know, not too many weeks ago and has just started taking off with the verses. So we're so excited to see what they're all going to do um, next year. Would all the Cubby leaders please just stand real quick, right where you are, don't move around. <laughs> I just want you to stand. So, yes, we, we had seven, we had seven, off and on, off and on, and it was one of, it was a wonderful year. We are praising God that, I won't be able to finish, <laughs> we could be here, you know, that we could be here. God protected us from COVID. I think he blessed our efforts. We were careful, we were safe. And, but we all got to be together. But these leaders, I mean, we, we love these kids, and I'm so thankful for each one of them. Um, thank you, parents, too. Can't do it without you. And I also, please spread the word and come to day camp. Aunt Kelly is so excited. I'm going to be at Camp La Mocha every day in July, and I'm gonna be hoping you all come. And when Mr. Swanley gets up here, Pretty exciting news, okay? So here's what Malachi and Della are gonna pull out of there. They got awards, and I do wanna mention the flower pots on the cubby tables. The kids decorated for you, and they also planted the flowers. So those are, those are for mommy and daddy to have tonight. Can we please cat, clap for the cubbies?
So this year we actually had to do things totally different. Um, the, I, uh, Katie Elmore normally has the kindergarten class, but they joined my class. My first grade class actually went to Karen's class. It's been a great year. Um, we had a good time this year. We had six boys this year. That was fun. <laughs> Eli Carpenter, can you please stand up? He first he finished his first book and got a award. His uh, award ribbon. <laughs> Robert Denmark, can you please stand up? He also first er, finished his first book <laughs> and got a ribbon. Dean Moser, who is actually not here, he's on vacation, received um, award ribbon for uh, Sparky First Book. Mr. Jared Schweitzer. He also got his Sparks First Book award ribbon. Next year I have all six boys, all good. And it's gonna be fun. The video really captured the energy of the Sparks Club this year. We were so blessed to be their leaders and are so looking forward to seeing many of these children again next year because we will go back to, Lord willing, go back to having three separate grade groups next year. So the first and se the second grade teachers get to have the first grade children again and the first grade leaders get to have the kindergartners again. In the first grade, we started most, ran most of the year with just two, which, hence the joining into the second grade. Johnny Jonathan Brittingham completed his second book award. Johnny, can you stand up? And Coralie Wickham completed her Spark Second Book Award ribbon. And for the last part of the year, Coralie brought a friend and cousin. So we had Annabella Wickham join us for part of the year, and she's been a delightful addition to our group, too. In the second grade, Annika Lanning completed her third book, earning her Sparky plaque. Annika? <laughs> huh? Wiley Rose completed her second book award. Can you stand up, Wiley? <laughs> Travis Schweitzer completed his third book, earning his Sparky plaque. <laughs> and Trent Schweitzer also earned his, completed his third book, earning his Sparky plaque. Can I actually have Katie and Mrs. Becker please stand up? for all the help that you have given for Alana's.
guys can have it. Hi. I'm pretty sure I know everybody here, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Laura Carpenter. Usually I work with Ray and Rose Harmon with the Puggles, but we didn't have any Puggles this year, which is kind of understandable. <laughs> It's very different. So I stepped in and worked with Susie Schweitzer with the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade girls. They're all together. Um, we had six girls this year, and I, it was very different. It was very giggly, as you could see from the video. But it was a lot of fun, and um, I learned just as many verses as they did, I think, which is always great um, because in Puggles they're not memorizing verses yet so it was nice to have an opportunity to do that again um, and game time it's not something I'd done in a while either and being one of the younger leaders on the game floor I got roped into a lot of games <laughs> and <laughs> I can still run around the circle <laughs> um, so that was a lot of fun um, all of the six girls finished their book this year, which was great. So they all get to go to camp if they want to. Um, the third grade girls, Ava Carpenter, Alana Elmore, and Brinley Wickham, you can stand up. They all earned their Alpha Award this year. And Emma Denmark, our fourth grade girl. She also earned her Alpha Award. Adeline Wickham earned her Challenge Award. And Autumn Fondercheck, sorry, earned her Timothy Award. She's finished with TNT and moving on to Trek next year. So great job, girls, and I look forward to seeing what you do next year. <laughs> Got some giggly people down here. So <clears throat> I was tempted to call my wife Charity up here to hold the mic for me, but I see it's already attached to the podium. So I'll save her the embarrassment of that. For those who are here during the church service and our VBS presentations, you'll understand what I'm saying. But if you don't, look at YouTube. Anyway, um, I have been in charge, I guess you could say that, <laughs> of the third and fourth boys for a couple of years now. And I, I got to say, it has been an amazing journey uh, since I think I started in 2015. Um, I gotta say, I had a great group of leaders, uh, Mr. Wagner and Mr. Lockwood. Uh, they definitely have been my support, my foundation. They've been uh, keeping me going, and along with the kids. I don't want to downplay the kids. And I know there's two in particular that I'm going to be missing greatly as they move up, uh, but you always hold a special spot in my heart just like Josiah Lanning, who was ecstatic in the beginning when Jason, Mr. Carpenter, stepped up and took him and Wyatt, because Josiah wasn't looking to have another year with me. <laughs> but I, I definitely enjoyed it, and I, I just want to say it's been such a privilege and an honor to be a part of this ministry to be able to develop those relationships, as Mr. Bennett was saying, because let me tell you, the relationships are the key to this. And, and it's not difficult because we serve a relational God, three in one. So uh, we have a great role model to look at, to uh, and help with that. Um, I'm not gonna take up much more time because uh, there's a whole bunch I like to say, um, but I definitely want to recognize uh, our two graduatees. Yes, that's a word, look it up. <laughs> Remember that for Scrabble. 
Um, Mr. Woodrow and Mr. Julius, if you could please stand up for me. <clears throat> These two boys are in fourth grade, so they will not be with us next year, which brings a tear to my eye. And um, I got to say, Mr. S uh, Julius, could you stand up for me? You are looking sharp, my man. <laughs> you, you're making me look bad up here dressed in my work clothes. The only thing you're missing is a handkerchief. We'll work on that for next year, OK? And maybe even a hat. But Woodrow and uh, Julius, like I said, will be graduating this year. They finished their book, Grace in Action, and uh, earned their Alpha Award. So you gentlemen will be uh, surely missed. So if I could get a round of applause for those two. The next two, well, one in particular was by far the problem child, and that was Blaine. <laughs> I won't mention his last name. Um, but no, we had Lincoln and Blaine who, uh, along with Julius and Woodrow were very consistent throughout the year and we greatly appreciated that. So could I get Lincoln and Blaine to please stand? <laughs> they also finished their books um, and received the Alpha Award also. Unfortunately, they have another year with me. <laughs> or I should say fortunately. But um, I just want to also take the time right now if Mr. Wagner and Mr. Lockwood would stand up, please. Oh, oh whoa, 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 not yet, Mr. L uh, Wagner, Mr. Lockwood, please, please stay standing. So what I need you guys to do is raise your right hand high up. Now bring it down to your back and pat. I will give you a hug, but social distancing and awkwardness, I'll say that for the parking lot. But you guys have no idea how much I appreciate the time and the effort that you put into this, not only for my benefit, but the benefit of our kids in this program. So thank you very much. So I stepped in to uh, kind of fill the role of the fifth and sixth grade um, leader and when I was asked I I said yeah I I'll do my best because I couldn't honestly commit with my job not sure if I was gonna be able to have the time um, but God's good and I don't think I missed a single night um, I might have been a little late but I that's my yeah I'm a, I was on Jason time um, but uh, you know I I really felt like God wanted me to step in and try to fill this position the best I could, and uh, it worked out well. So um, I really didn't have much planned to say because, uh, well, I had Josiah in my class, so it was very rare I was able to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> so I didn't have anything planned, really. Um, no, they've, I had a really great group. Um, I had both Josiah Lanning and uh, Wyatt Rose, um, you guys attended uh, quite regularly, and then also Elliot uh, Luru. Um, he, you guys, you, well, you never called, you called either John or Amy every night and said your verses. I mean, you guys were so diligent, and I'm really proud of you for that. Um, so we're going to start with uh, Josiah. He won, or he earned his challenge award. We'll go ahead and stand up, Josiah. And uh, Wyatt Rose, he earned his Alpha Award. And Elliot earned the Timothy Award. So congratulations, guys. You did excellent work.
So we elected as Trek to do a skit instead of singing. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, my name is Colin Swimley. Uh, I am mostly the game guy. I'm the guy that makes Laura run laps around the game circle. Uh, you're welcome for that. Just keeping you in shape. Um, so yeah, if your kids ever came home with like a, a bruise or a, a cut or a concussion, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> for what it's worth, they broke more of my stuff than I think I broke of them. So. 
Uh, we're okay. Um, but the way it worked out was I only had two game times uh, in the, the three slots of the night that we have, the three rotations. Uh, so I had an open rotation where I wasn't really doing anything. And so I took the opportunity to jump in Trek. Mr. Mosier, Shane Mosier, was uh, the brains of the operation. If you know me, it's not hard to imagine that he's the brains of the operation. Uh, but he's on vacation, so here I am. Uh, but we had a great time with him. Uh, I was mostly there to uh, develop some new motivational techniques uh, for saying their verses. Mostly that consisted of holding them at a Nerf gun to their head while they were saying their verses. And if they messed up, you know, uh, really worked. I mean, these dudes cranked out verses like great. You wouldn't imagine. So, uh, you know, it didn't leave a mark. We're fine. Uh, but no, we had a great time with what we had. We had four kids total. Um, three were, one was remote, three were mostly in person. And uh, we really had a great time uh, spending time. That skit, I chose it a little with a purpose because, uh, you know, in our world, we've been facing a lot of stuff right now, whether it be uh, the pandemic, which is the big elephant in the room, or whether it be any of the other. Uh, you know, the riots and, and turn on the news and you'll see a, a list of things. Uh, and that, that skit kind of points out that what's there to fear if you have God with you. And uh, so that's kind of what we've been preaching and teaching uh, this year. It's just no matter what's going on in our world, you know, God's by your side and God is going to guide you and protect you through that. Uh, and I think that's a really big encouragement as, as Christians. We can be able to say that and, and face what the world throws us without having to, you know, to fear. Uh, so we do have uh, a few awards to get to here. I won't drag on too long talking. Um, but we'll start off with our seventh graders. These suckers get to stick around for another year and, and endure their punishment. Um, but we do have uh, Simon LaRue. Pop up there, buddy. Simon LaRue got his, uh, his Trek milestone. He's, he cranked out another book. He did a great job. He was our remote guy, and uh, he was very faithful to call. And, you know, as uh, Jason, I think, mentioned, it's they, they, you guys were awesome, even though you weren't here, and it killed me to not see you here. You broke my heart. You broke my heart, kid, but it's okay. Uh, we had a great time, and, uh, you know, with any luck, this pandemic stuff will go away, right? Yeah. Uh, but the other one we have is Ruthie Flood. Hop up there, Ruthie. She got her track milestone as well. She cranked out her book. If anyone's keeping score, I shot her in the head with a Nerf dart more than any, well, I don't know, maybe not. I shot her in the head with a Nerf dart a lot. Uh, <laughs> but she got through her book. See, it worked. It worked. Uh, and the last, and we got Sawyer Lockwood. He's actually not here tonight, but uh, he was always pretty faithful to come, and, and he was a great addition to the group. And then we had Lucas Landing. You can feel free to stand. <laughs> Lucas. <clears throat> Kid. There we go. Lucas is our eighth grader. Uh, he got his Meritorious Award, which is phenomenal. He, he cranked out every book since Cubbies, and He's been doing a great job. He was, I think you've got to be the first one, I think, in the truck group to finish his book. I don't know what the, I didn't pay attention to that. But uh, he, most of the time when I shot him with a Nerf gun, it was just for fun. Uh, because he, he knew his verses. He was a good kid. But uh, you can sit down. I'll stop, I'll stop torturing you. Um, but we had a great time. Shane, I know Shane wishes he could be here. He was pretty faithful to come. Every, you know, he, of course, dealt with some work stuff, too. And so that was kind of a part of the reason why I was there as well to step in when he wasn't able to make it. But uh, speaking from a Trek perspective, it was phenomenal. And then just as a game guy, because I don't give out game awards or anything, um, I'm not a you have fun, you won type of guy. So it's a little weird that I don't give awards, but hey. Uh, so you guys did a great job with game time. I loved hanging out with you guys. It's definitely the best part of the night, right? Is that the best part of the night? Yes, thank you. Come on. It's my favorite part of the night. I love getting to hang out with you guys. And you know, one last time, what's up, guys? Yeah, that's how we started every night. And uh, just so you know, Dicey and Dicer, they're on vacation. They're having a good time. Um, they'll probably come back with a few kids, you know, so you can run like 32 laps. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> Dicey and Dicer are our dice that we roll, and that tells them how many laps they're running. And sometimes they can be really nice. Uh, some, most of the time they're not. Uh, but Dicey and Dicer. Uh, so you guys did a great job of game time. Trekkers, phenomenal job. I believe... We are looking forward to some Camp Lamoka camper ships. Here's a video.
great. So how many of you kids have been to Lamoka before? Is it any fun? <laughs> Are you interested in going back? Good, because a lot of you have that opportunity. It is uh, interesting that in a year when our cup club size was down because of COVID and everything, that our camperships are just about right on the money where they usually are. So you guys that uh, put in a lot of work this year and did a great job, and we are proud of what you've accomplished, very pleased with what you've accomplished. Um, so the Lamoka campership slips are on the tables along with everything else. <coughs> And there are uh, codes there that you can use to register. The registration is all done online, as it was last year. The only difference this year is that we extended Awana by a couple of weeks to get everything done, which means those camp slots are filling up fast. If you have not already registered, I would encourage you to go home tonight and register in order to try and be sure you get the week that you want because uh, Lamoka is planning on a regular year of overnight youth camps and everything seems to be coming together for that and the registrations are going gangbusters so be sure and, and get your, your reservations in as quickly as you can. I'm just going to read through the list of kids that earned camperships and uh, then we can applaud at the end for all the work that this represents. Most of us as adults <coughs> would be kind of left crying in the corner <laughs> if, we, if we had to accomplish what these kids have accomplished. So for starters day camp, all of these are full camp except uh, one I'll mention is a half. So uh, starters day camp, Cecilia Mosier, Della Wickham, Eli Carpenter, Robert Denmark, Dean Mosier, and Jared Schweitzer all earned uh, a full week at Starters Day Camp. Everything after this now is youth camp, uh, actually two, Johnny Brittingham and Coralie Wickham had a choice. They're in that age threshold, I think, where they could go either way, but they both are uh, headed for, for youth camp. So Johnny Brittingham, Cora Lye Wickham, Annika Lanning, Trent Schweitzer, Travis Schweitzer, Wiley Rose, Ava Carpenter, Blaine Couch, Alana Elmore, Lincoln Vondercheck, Brindley Wickham, Emma Denmark, Woodrow Elmore, Julius Corsioli, Josiah Lanning, Adeline Wickham, Elliot LaRue, Autumn Vondercheck, Ruthie Flood, Simon LaRue, and Lucas Lanning all earned full weeks at youth camp, and Wyatt Rose earned a half campership at youth camp. So those kids all deserve a real round of applause. <laughs> Just on behalf of the church, I would extend the thank you that, that John gave to the leaders, to each of you that serves so faithfully. I would also add John himself. He, he doesn't pat himself on the back, but as a commander, we've appreciated his service and, and everything he's done. All right, that being said, um, we are done for the night. So I just want another round of applause for all the hard work that was done tonight. You guys did awesome. Look forward to seeing you next year. Bring lots of friends. We have lots of space for all your friends from school to come next year. So let's uh, bow our heads and close our eyes. I'm going to ask Pastor Hamilton to close our time in a word of prayer.
Your hand. 